In this presentation, we will enter data from the bank statement into the QuickBooks system for the first month that we will be entering data into QuickBooks for. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. To enter this information, we have the bank statement. And note, we've made a copy of the bank statement in a PDF file. I'm going to open that using Adobe Reader now. So to do that, I'm going to right click on the file and we're going to open with and go to Adobe Acrobat Reader. This way it'll open offline and we can make changes to it with that program uh, if we so choose. So I'm going to open it in that format. Now we're just going to enter these deposits directly into the register and I'm just going to, I'm just going to check them off or highlight them as we do so. Note that there is a beginning balance. That means that there was some activity prior to this month of operations. That's okay. Whether there was prior activity, the business was in place, or that was just a deposit that was made as we go or before the company uh, started really doing business, doesn't really matter. If, even if this was a business that was going before, we're drawing a line right now, and we're going to enter this data as of this point in time going forward. So if there were, if there were prior uh, transactions, that's fine. If you need detail about them, we need to go to the prior system. What we're going to do now is enter the data as of now going forward. We're not going to enter this beginning balance yet. We'll discuss that when we do the bank reconciliation as a typical issue that comes up when we do that first bank reconciliation. We're just going to take these beginning these deposits and enter them into the system. To do this, it's best to have a side by side. So if you had two screens open, that would be best. If you could, if you want to print this out, of course. You can print it out and highlight this in, the, in a similar fashion as we will do here. That works fine as well. And we'll, we're going to have to jump back and forth between the screens so we can see what we are working with. Here we are in QuickBooks. We've got the home page open. We also have the open windows open. To open the open windows, you want to go to the view drop down and select the open windows list. What we're going to do now is go right to the banking check register. So we can do that by going to lists. Or you can go to banking. You can also, there's also a register in the banking system system over here, the check register. I like going to the drop down up top, going to banking, use register, and then go to the checking account. Just make sure it's on the checking account. If you have some other windows open, it might go somewhere funny. So we're going to make sure we're on the checking account and open that. Nothing's in there so far. So again, you might be worried that, that beginning balance isn't there. Maybe we need to do that. We'll discuss that. We could do that now, but I want to discuss that as an issue that often happens when we when we start doing the reconciliation. So now we're just going to enter these deposits and we're just going to enter them one by one as we go. And the assumption will be that all deposits are from customers because this is the business checking account. Note, we don't have much information. We don't have much outs here. I don't know exactly when the work was done. I don't know who the customers are because I don't have that detail. But if we're doing the bare minimum and we just want to basically... This isn't to track customers. It's not to track receivables. In other words, it's just to get the revenue and cash in place. So we have that data to make reports and decisions with, as well as probably do taxes and what at the end of the year. So we're going to start entering this data. Also note that we're going to enter the data as of January. If you start in the middle of the year or something like that, then you could do that. But just let yourself know and your client know that if you had business going on before that, then you're going to have to add up whatever your prior system is to this in order to provide that. So to, to tax preparers or anything, if you want a year's worth of data. Otherwise, we'll have to go back to January, get all the bank statements from January on forward and start at the beginning of the year because that's what's probably going to be needed at the end of the year when we do tax preparation or any of that information. So just keep that in mind as we go. We're just what, No matter what month we started, we're going to go back to January here and just try to enter the data for the entire year's worth of information. So we're going to, now we're just going to go into QuickBooks and enter this data. Notice if you had bank feeds or anything like that, it would be very similar. If we can get the bank feeds to download the information, we're still going to have to assign it. And what we're going to do, of course, is assign it, assuming that pretty much all the deposits are revenue. So once we get the data into the system, however we do so, we're still going to have to assign the proper accounts to make the financials work. So we're then going to go back in here. So we've got the uh, January 5th, and we're just going to enter these deposits one by one. So I'm going to go back to QuickBooks here, minimize this, and we're going to enter this first deposit. Notice as we enter data that we have turned off the alarms because we know that we're going to be entering data possibly prior to the time period that it currently is at. So we don't want to pop up saying, hey, you're 90 days before what the current date is or anything like that. 
because we know that's going to be the case. But, however, we have to be careful then that we don't enter the dates in the wrong time period. And if we have any problems, then we can always check the dating. Did we enter the wrong dates <laughs> when we get to the reports, if they look funny, and just make sure that we've got the dates in there correctly. So in our case, obviously, I'm actually entering this into the future. But in practice, most likely, we would be starting a new customer and going to the past or trying to enter all our data from January sometime in the past up, up forward. So we're going to say, okay, this is 010519 is going to be our data. Now, it, it doesn't have any type number because it's trying to guess a check number here because we're in the check register. And this isn't a check, so I usually just put DEP for deposit here if it's a deposit. Now, the, this is going to be the name. We don't have a name because I don't know who the customer is. We could assign a customer just like ran, just say this is Mr. Random Customer. We don't know this customer or we can basically leave this field blank and then we can say that the deposit is going to be make sure we're in the deposit side notice I'm tabbing through tab 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 and to get to the deposit side the deposit that first deposit was 1122 tab then we have to just assign the revenue account so we got to assign where it's going to go and we're going to say all deposits are revenue so we're going to say where's our revenue account we have a sales revenue and a shipping now, the sales kind of indicates that it's that it's something to do with inventory. And we don't really know. Again, uh, this company, we're going to say that this company does some inventory and it does some service revenue. And we don't know which is which by the deposit unless there was some indication within the electronic transfers and something that would help us differentiate those. But it's all income to them, supposedly. And therefore, we're going to choose an income account. So we'll choose the sales account. If we wanted to go in there and change the name of sales to just call it something more generic, like just revenue or income, we can do that as well. If it was just a service company, QuickBooks might call it, by the way, fees earned, which is just like we charge fees. Still just a revenue account. It's going to act in the same fashion if you wanted to just call it sales or, or um, if you wanted to call it revenue or income, you can change the account. And that would be a more generic name. So that's going to be the first transaction. Now it's still giving me alarm here. It says this transaction is more than 30 days in the future. Are you sure you want to make the change? And it might be in the past, of course, if it was if, and currently because we would be making information in the past. And we're going to say yes because we're trying to enter a whole year's worth of data. To turn that preference off, we're going to go to the edit to up top, drop down, preferences. And then we're going to go to accounting, company preferences. And then we're gonna we're gonna turn off these warnings. So we've turned off the warnings now, and we'll say okay. So if you haven't done that already, that'll turn off the warnings. Okay. So next transaction, we're just gonna go straight through these. I could highlight these as we go, and this is the nice thing about the Adobe. We can we can highlight this transaction, right click right, right click on it, and highlight the transaction. So we can say okay, we found that one. Next one's on on one seven for one thousand two oh seven. Okay. So we're just going to say this is on, and notice I could just say plus now to the seventh here. So there's one set. Again, it's defaulting to one because it's trying to trying to have a check number, but there's no check number. I'm just going to call it DEP for deposit. I don't know who the customer is. We're just going to go over here and put the amount is 1207. And once again, sales and enter. And we'll just keep on going through this process. We're going to say we've, we entered this one, done. And this the, to enter in this format and highlight them probably is excessive at this point. You, if you have a ruler or something like that, or they were side by side screens, it wouldn't be too difficult to go down. But the highlighting is useful once we do the reconciliation for many other things as well. So now we're just going to keep on going through this process. We're going to say this one was on the ninth. So I'm just going to say plus to the ninth. I'm going to call it a deposit. I don't know the person. We're going to make sure we're on the deposit side. One zero three zero sales notice i'm just typing in sales and it picks up the income type account we'll say tab and enter now as we do this we might want to check what's happening to the financial statements as we go let's check that now this would be going to the reports up top company and financial and we're going to take a look first at the balance sheet and i'm going to change the date range here customize reports from 010119, January 1st, 2019, 123119. I'm just going to go for the full year 
January 1st, 2019 to December 31st, 2019. It's on accrual and we're basically entering a cash method. It doesn't really matter because even though it says accrual, we're only giving it the cash data. So, so notice that accrual versus cash doesn't mean a whole lot if we're just giving it cash related data and just entering the check register. So be aware of that no matter how you're doing the accounting. So here we have the checking account. Notice it's in the checking account and equity is increasing so far. So if I go to the checking, if we double click on the checking, we'll zoom in on it. Here's our three deposits that we've made so far. That's what's generating it. It says the other side is going to sales. That's the split. That's an income statement account. And if we double click on it, we don't go to the register. We go to a deposit screen. And that's because QuickBooks sees this as a deposit, whether we put it into the register or not, because we told it it's an increase to the checking account. So notice what QuickBooks will use when it starts to do this stuff. So when we go back, we know the forms that are used. In other words, if I go to the home page and the open windows home page, they're saying it's this icon here. It's a deposit. So what we're doing in the check register is the same as entering this information using this button. It's just faster to use the check register. QuickBooks still sees it as a deposit. So if we go back to the transaction, I'm going to close this now and we go back to the balance sheet. That's what we have. The other side is in equity and it actually breaks out the income statement because it's in the current time period. So that's all we have right now. We have cash is going up and the other side of it is equity. It's in net income, which is in the income statement or QuickBooks calls the profit and loss. So to see that we're going to reports up top, company and financial profit and loss. And I'm going to change this to 010119 to 123119. And then here's our sales that we have. Revenue. Revenue minus expenses. All we have is revenue so far. Here's our three th revenues. Double clicking on it. There's our deposit. So that's all we're going to do. That's what we'll see for basically all of these. We're just going to keep on going through and entering this data. I'll keep these two open. Back to the checking account. Register. And we're going to enter this, the next deposit. So we just entered this deposit. We're just going to go through this process and enter the next deposit. So that's going to be on the 10th. It's going to be a deposit. Deposit side, 9, 10, sales. And then we're going to enter the next deposit. So we'll highlight this. Right click, next deposit is going to be on the 13th plus 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 DEP we're going to say this is 850 Whoop. and then if I hit enter instead of tab it's going to try to do that I'm going to put sales and enter and then we'll say the next deposit is going to be on the 15th right click highlight next deposit is on the 15th DEP we're going to say that's for 1500 and we're going to say sales. And then I'll go to the next deposit. And now the next deposit looks awfully large. So that's when we might say, hmm, something looks funny about that deposit. That's not normal. If we look at all the other deposits and they're like around the same amount and we say that one's a big deposit, something funny probably happened there. So we probably want to ask about that deposit. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm not going to stop there. I'm not going to say I can't go forward because I need to do something about that. And that looks funny. I'm going to keep pushing forward and mark that off in our open items. So we're going to mark it off in our open items and I'm going to enter it so I can still reconcile. And I'm going to try to try to put it somewhere where I know it's, I can ask a question about it. So I'm going to put it on the 16th. This is a deposit. It's for 50,000. Now what I'm going to do is make another account that I'll call like an uncategorized account that I can put this to and then go back and check. So I'm going to add a new account. I'm going to select this drop down, and it's not there right now. So what I'm going to do is, is enter uncategorized income. Just type it in there. Nothing that's going to pop up. And then when I select tab, it's going to say, do you want to set something up? I'm paraphrasing. It says uncategorized income is not found. So it says, do you want to set it up? I'm going to say, yeah, set it up. And then it's not going to be an expense. It's an other income. We're dealing with income. It defaults as an expense because we're on the register. So I'll select the drop down, make it an income account, and say save and close. And then when we hit enter and deposit this, I've deposited it. Make sure you record it or it's not going to deposit. Then we go to our 
profit and loss and say okay and now it's got these two categories here's this uncategorized income the reason that's important is because now i can always go back in it and reassign it quickbooks is really liberal in letting us uh, change things like dates and accounts and so i can if i just put it into sales then i might not know i might not remember but if i put it into undeposited i'm like okay that's clearly got to be really assigned and the easy it's easy to reassign it because i could just double click on it double click on it here and then I can reassign this account. I don't have to go back to the register. I can change it right here to sales if that's where it should go or to whatever account we may need. So then I'm gonna go in into the uh, our open items here. And I've made another open item to ask the client. There's 50,000 in uncategorized income. And I'm gonna ask, well, what is this? <laughs> uh, we hope it's a big sale. You know, Our assumption is it's probably not. It seems like a very big sale. If it was, it's probably like a loan or something like that but uh, we're gonna ask about it because it's it's over the norm so we're gonna save that and then we'll go back to our information we're gonna close this back out close this back out we're gonna go back to the checking account in the open windows and keep going from there now here uh, we, we can highlight this and if we had some other format we can highlight it like a different color or something like that but we've input that now we're gonna go to the next item this is going to be as of the 18th so plus plus to the 18th it's going to be a deposit we don't know the depositor 980 sales back to the norm so we'll enter that information and we'll go back here that looks pretty normal so we're going to say highlight that the next one is going to be on the 21st it's going to be a deposit we're going to say that's for 1230 and we're going to say that's going to go to sales and enter and so we found that one and that one is good now notice if i miss key anything here i'm just going to say right now it's on purpose even though it's not but <laughs> it will find that in, in when we reconcile so we'll still reconcile so if anything's wrong we're going to go back and reconcile that and th that's when we'll really find what it's wrong so if you miss key something don't feel too worried because you can then reconcile it that's what the point is of the bank reconciliation so then we're going to go uh, 131 or the 23rd it's going to be a deposit and this was for the uh, 821 it's for sales and there we have that and then while well, the next one looks awfully large again so the, the, this 10,000 that looks kind of large so again, I'm going to do the same thing and say hmm that looks a little out of the order ordinary I'm going to kind of flag that and say that I gotta do something do something special i'm gonna ask about that one so 27 i'm still gonna put it in place i'm not gonna stop i'm not gonna say i can't move forward because that's there i'm just gonna put it in place because if i stopped last time i would have had to ask a question and then you know a couple days later ask another question i want to enter all the data <laughs> ask all the questions at one point and then make all the changes we need at one time so then i'm going to put this into uncategorized income again uncategorized and I'm going to put that into our notes. So we'll pull out the notes here. So we're going to say, hey, there's 10,000 that we put into uncategorized income. It was a deposit. Uh, what is this? And we're going to say it's probably good to give them the date instead of having to go back and get the date. So I've included the date here and here so that we have that. So those are going to be our questions as we go, as we move forward. Back to our check register or back to our bank statement. We'll highlight that. And then we're going to have the last one. I'm just going to highlight it already because it's going to be good. And then we'll go back here. And we're saying that this is going to be the last deposit on the 29th. I'm hitting the plus. It's going to be a deposit. And that's for 640. And that's going to be sales. And enter. So there we have it. Now, again, if we missed anything, if anything is off, I'm not going to check it too close. I mean, I'm going to check it. You could check it fairly closely now. But we're going to check it again when we do the bank reconciliation. If we look at our major financial statements, balance sheet here. We're going to say here's our balance sheet and it's got uh, 70,000 uh, to 290 in it. If we go to our bank statement, that should match here, 70,000 290. That's only because it's our first month, though. So that will be more difficult to do if it wasn't the first month. And we don't have the beginning balance. So we're still going to have we still have some difficulties. That's OK. We got the data in there. We'll figure it out when we do the bank reconciliation. Now, the other side of that then is on the equity side, and that's because the only income we have right now is from customers or the only data we have is from customers 
and it's increasing what has been earned, which is all allocated to equity, the owners. It's all part of owner's equity now. And it's also in net income, which is on the profit and loss. So if we go to the profit and loss, we've got the sales here. And then we've got this substantial amount in uncategorized income. If we double click on that, here it is. We've got to make sure that we reallocate that at some point. We just don't know where to put it. It doesn't seem proper to put to just income. So to reallocate that, we'll just double click on this and change whatever accounts need to be changed when we figure out where they need to go after our open items have been answered. So we'll close this back out. And that's all we have on uh, the income statement now. It's completely on a, on a cash basis, completely driven just by the data from the bank statement. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.